Well, hello everybody. We've got a pretty exciting problem right here. We've got this semicircle with a rectangle kind of laying across it. We've got these intersection points, as you can see. Our job is to find the area of the shaded region. Before we dive into it though, if you're a math teacher and you'd like to use this problem in your classroom, I've got some free resources I'll share with you at the end of the video. So stick around. Let's, let's go ahead and dive into it now though, okay? So let's figure out exactly what this shaded area is. We have a semicircle and in the semicircle that's not shaded is a, well, it looks like it's a trapezoid, right? And this little segment right here. So if I take the semicircle and I subtract both the trapezoid and the segment, I'm going to find the area of the shaded region. So let's write down an expression for each of these little things right here. So a semicircle, half of a circle's area, pi r squared over 2. A trapezoid, sum of the bases times the height divided by 2. The tricky one is that little segment. So let's go ahead and draw a triangle from the center of the circle. And we have a sector. A sector looks like this. It's part of a full circle. We just want the top, kind of like an ice cream cone's exposed ice cream, right? So if you have an ice cream cone with some ice cream in it, we just want the exposed part on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that sector, we're going to subtract the triangle from it, and what's left is that little segment. Now, a sector's um, area, well, a sector's portion, a portion of a circle. So the portion of the circle is its angle, the sector angle divided by 360. That's how much of the full circle it would be. And then the entire circle's area is pi r squared. So we're taking a portion of the circle, and then we're going to subtract the triangle. It's not going to be a right triangle in this case, so we're going to have to use the trig formula, 1 half bc sine of a, and that's going to give us our area of the little segment. So now, uh, when we're dealing with this, we want to make sure that, that we put this area in a group. Otherwise, we're going to kind of mess up our signs right here. So we're going to make sure we have our parentheses around this entire this expression for the segment. All right, let's start exploring this a little bit. Now, um, let's see if we can figure out these side lengths over here. I know it's a rectangle, and I know that this side is marked the same as this little section here and this one here. So it's a rectangle, it's a right angle. This side is the same as that side. We have an isosceles right triangle. Hypotenuse is 4. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. You can see the work on the screen just like this right here. So I happen to know that the square root of 8 or 2 root 2 is the length of each of these sides. That's kind of useful. I also happen to know that this is an isosceles right triangle, which makes this 45 degrees. And this is supplementary, so that's going to be 135 degrees. That's going to be really, really crucial because what we're going to be able to do in just a moment is we're going to be able to draw a right triangle right here in the center, from the center of the circle to this point and this point right here. And this 135 degrees is going to be key. So let's go ahead and take a look at that because what we're going to end up with is a 90 degree arc right here. And the reason we know that's a 90 degree arc is if you take a look at the full circle, this is an inscribed angle right here and its subtended arc is double the length or uh, double the measure of the angle so if i go all the way around this arc right here is going to be double of that angle which is going to be 270 degrees so this is 270 degrees all the way around here which leaves us just 90 degrees because of you know circles 360 so 360 minus 270 90 degrees so that means that the central angle right here subtended is going to be a right angle. Ah, and now what we can do is we can go ahead and draw a line connecting these two, make a chord, and we're going to figure out this length. So I happen to know that this side right here of this triangle is 2 root 2, because that was marked, and this is 4, right? In case you forgot, it's 2 root 2, this is 2 root 2, right? It's given to us that this side is 4, so let's see if we can go ahead and figure out this side length right here. Because if we can figure out this side length right here, it's on the diagram originally, it's this one. If we can figure that out, then we can figure out the radius because that is a right triangle. And it's isosceles because these are both the radius. So anyway, I'm going to use the cosine rule. This side right here will be C, and this is angle C, right? And so it doesn't matter which of these are A or B, but let's go ahead and start plugging in our numbers right here. So we've got all of our work. You can see over here, we get the square root of 40, which is 2 root 10. So this distance from here to here is 2 root 10 using the cosine rule. 
right? All right, so that's pretty cool. Two root 10, that's that side right there. So now let's use that along with knowing that this is an isosceles right triangle, a squared plus b squared is c squared. We find out that each leg is two root five. And that's pretty cool because that means that the radius is two root five. It's one of the big things we need right here. So when we look, we need the radius, we need the height, we need the bases, we already have those. All we have left is one little, one little angle right here. So let's go ahead and back up and take a look at what we got. Let's take a look at everything. We know the radius, we know the length, the side lengths of each of the parts of that rectangle. All we're missing is that little angle for our sector, this one right here. We need that little angle right there. So we know that the radius is four. We know that, um, sorry, we know that the side length over here is four. We know the radius is two root five. So we're gonna use the cosine rule again. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus two BC times cosine of A. You can interchange the letters. Last time I used C is the unknown, but anyway, let's solve for A, the angle, right? We'll just use a little inverse operations. A lot of the time, um, reference sheets will give you a cleaned up version of this, um, but we're just gonna go ahead and use inverse operations. That's the formula we're gonna use to find the angle. Let's plug in our numbers. You can see, you can check it on your own, but I found that the angle right here for this sector is 53.1 degrees rounded to three significant figures. So now we've got all of our information. So we can start plugging in everything into this big giant formula right here. And um, yeah, let's see how it goes. So we've got the radius is two root five, right? We've got the height. The height is of this rectangle is the perpendicular height is two root two. We've got this side is two root two, the top is two root two, the bottom, the other base is four root two, it's two of them, right? And um, then we have over here, we have that the angle is 53.1, right? We've got the radius two root five again, uh, B and C are both two root five, and the angle here, 53.1. So just doing all of our calculation, do a little simplification on paper before I plug it into the calculator. I think that's the easiest way. I get 18.1. So that's kind of cool. Now, what if, does that really make sense? 18.1, does that seem like a reasonable answer? If we have that the radius is 2.5, well, what would be the area of the entire uh, circle? The, well, the semicircle. So if we did pi times two root five, two roots five squared, right, is 20. So you'd end up with 10 pi for the semicircle, which would be a little bit more than 30. Does it seem reasonable that 18 would be what's left after we take out that little these, these, this little shape here and this little shape here. I think so. I think that's a pretty good, um, that's a pretty good answer right there. All right. Now, there's a link in the description for those of you who are teachers. You can download this PowerPoint that I used here, as well as a, a Google Forms quiz that you can post in your classroom. This is a pretty cool challenge problem. I post a challenge problem like this in my classroom every single week. Uh, they're not mandatory. Students that are curious and want to do some math for the love of math for the puzzle solving and the problem solving that's involved have access to it. So I'll put links to all of that in the description below. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this problem. I hope you enjoyed doing it together and I hope you have a wonderful day.